Hello everyone, today I'm going to dive into some more interesting stuff using AI video for video editing with Juan Video Vase. This AI model are super flexible. As you can see, we have some examples that I did here. With the extend video method, we can do 21 second video to something like this where you get a full widescreen view with a portrait camera view video. The same characters, the same background, but with a different aspect ratio. You can do this using the WAN video vase, just like I showed in my previous unlimited length V2V tutorial. I created these videos using that workflow and changed them even further with a wider screen and other aspect ratios. Now you'll see the full street view, the background, some people, and the bike rider behind the character. In some cases, when generating AI videos, you might notice the character and camera always stay still. You may want to change that to another perspective with different aspect ratios, something beyond just close-ups of faces. You can also achieve half-body shots with this technique in one video. I've tried it with some higher quality videos generated in Kling AI, like this fast motion example. I used one of the templates from their showcase on the main page, and it's really cool. We have got an F1 car moving at high speed, and I wanted to capture the city and the racetrack too. So, using the one video vase, I expanded it to a wider screen, showing the whole track. And yes, there are some cute little cats parachuting down. It looks funny, but once again, we want a wider shot, so we bring it to the one video vase. This technique inherits the coloration and quality from the clean AI-generated videos and expands the video view with new aspect ratios. Another example I tried was with a first-person roller coaster ride. I changed it to a widescreen format where you see more of the surroundings. But this isn't just about changing aspect ratios, it's actually doing outpainting and video editing. For instance, take this dancer, one of the most famous ones. I applied video editing techniques to make her do the robot dance, creating a futuristic character smoothly performing those moves. Or, how about this footage from Pixie? The model is walking on the beach, and I wanted to transform her into a futuristic cyberpunk-style woman while keeping the summer outfit suitable for the beach environment. You can do all this with this technique. Now let's jump into mass editing. First, we'll go over to Comfy UI. You're looking at this workflow, which should seem pretty familiar if you've seen my previous tutorials on unlimited length or long video generation workflows using video to video or image to video methods. This structure is the same, but sometimes I like to play around with mask editing. As always, we use masking and the source video. These are the two things we need to adjust for the one video vase. Here, we're not just changing names, we're passing different elements from our reference video. First, we're going to try the outpainting technique we discussed earlier. Think of the biker lady dancing and expanding it to a wider screen, revealing what's in the background. Outpainting features are essential for video editing, and they're quite useful. So let's give it a shot. For example, I have some older, high-quality videos generated in Clean AI. Back then, Kling AI 2.1 produced amazing video models. I'll enhance this video using outpainting. I'll load the video here, and as you can see, it's on the loading screen in the custom notes. Then we'll load all the video frames to expand the aspect ratio, changing it from portrait to landscape. One thing I've learned through testing is that you don't want to oversize the width and height beyond what you actually need for outpainting. It's best to keep the original 720p8 resolution settings for WAN 2.1. That way, you save memory for longer video lengths and can upscale after changing the aspect ratio during outpainting. So, let's disable all the sampling first and go step by step. First, we'll run this group and see what happens. We're injecting 309 frames into the resize image, as you can see here. Since we're doing outpainting, instead of resizing, I'll switch to pad settings. Once I change the key proportions to pad settings, we now have white regions on the left and right sides, exactly what we need for outpainting. The AI will fill in these white areas in each frame. Next, we'll load the video sampling groups, enable sampling and looping conditions. Looping conditions are something I've talked about in previous videos for handling long video lengths with specific settings and logic. Coming back to this group, I'm using Alama Vision with local AI model. 
I set up Olama and am using Quen 2.5 VL, a vision language model for image to caption and image to text context. Here, I instruct the AI to give me image prompts based on the input image, automatically passing the text strength to the positive text prompt. You don't have to write anything manually, it runs automatically. If you have Olama and any vision language model, you don't need to use Quinn 2.5 VL. You can try other options if you prefer. Personally, I find 2.5 and Queen 3 work well with WAN 2.1 since they're from the same company. Let's start the sampling steps. Once I click Run, it will process those 300 frames. Before that, we need to set the models. Again, because we're using the vase in this workflow, just like in image to video and video to video long length workflows I've discussed before, you guys can check that out. Some people asked why they were getting blurry or unmatched image to video results using the image to video long length workflow. When I checked, most cases I found were using wrong model type in the loader. Well, think. See this node, we are using the one video vase, so here's your answer. Anyway, moving on, here I am using the Fusion X model. This time, I'll use the WAN 14B text to vid Fusion X vase, FP16. I'll disable GGUF and enable FP16 to see what we get. Once I select the proper model, generating the video result should be no problem since everything relies on the WAN video vase. For logic, this applies to those who had issues with previous videos. Some were using text to video, and others were using image to video models in the model loader. After figuring that out, we're talking about the WAN video vase here. Use the WAN video vase as set in the workflow. You can see the generating progress here. The first sampling gives us a pretty good result, and it's ongoing, generating the next sections to complete all 300 frames. Wait for the result, and we'll see how it looks. This is the Juan Vase to video, using conditioning to create something cool. It was a portrait video, and now we're changing it to landscape, filling in the content on the left and right sides. We're using three loops of generations to complete the remaining video frames. After the first 81 frames, we continue with the rest using this loop logic. You can see the difference between outpainting and control net video to video, though both are video to video. The condition is different. We added white regions to change the video frame dimensions, and the AI fills in the content on those white areas. You can also see the mask output highlighting the white regions. This is where the AI works on each frame. Of course, you can reverse this logic for inpainting instead of outpainting. That means mass editing your existing video. For example, changing the character's clothes or hair color. But in this case, we're doing outpainting. And here's our final output. The original source reference was in portrait dimensions, and now we have landscape view dimensions. We went through all the logic, sampling steps, and cut extra frames to get our final result. Pretty cool. There are still some stitching issues to improve, and morphing can be tricky in certain parts. But overall, when I try smoother videos like the sports racing car or the cat flying over the sea, it works well. The cat video was inspired by one of the showcases using Clean AI. This outpainting process is mostly automated, so you don't need to change anything in the middle. Why did I add looping logic and extra sampling steps? Well, most simple outpainting workflows or normal WAN 2.1 workflows handle very short video lengths. If you try to process 300 or 500 frames in one batch, you'll likely run out of memory. By using looping similar to the control net video to video concept, we separate the video length into chunks and work section by section. Another way to use mask editing is for in painting instead of out painting. I've shown this in previous videos since the release of the one video vase. Over time, with more fine tuned models like Movie Gen and now Fusion X merge models, We've achieved better results and faster sampling speeds, allowing for even better mass editing. Take this example. I've got this character, and we're using segment anything. We can do masking here. For instance, 
will mask the human throughout the entire 217 frame video. Then, we combine the mask with the image and pass it to the wand vase to video again using the same nodes. These nodes are very flexible. There are three combinations where we play around with the reference image, video mask, and source video. Using looping logic again, we process the remaining video length. 200 frames in this case. The first sampling gets 81 frames, and then it continues repeatedly. I use 10 overlap frames for context, which works better as I've seen. Let's try this image so more people understand how it goes. We'll use the Wonder Woman character as our edit object. Here's the generated video. Pretty cool, right? This time, we got a pretty accurate character based on the reference image of the Wonder Woman costume. It's applied to the character pose, and you can see frame by frame, it looks very much like the reference image from the workflow. What I did here was remove the background and match the dimensions since I'm using 720p resolution. I also filled the space of the white background and created a preview image to ensure smooth segmentation. Everything looks normal in these two sections, image and reference. Once you have the image, reference video, and mask area filled for each frame, you're good to go for image editing. There shouldn't be any problems with the settings unless your text prompts aren't accurate. If the vision language model gives wrong descriptions of your reference image, I suggest disabling the looping part and running the first sampler for a small test, like a preview of the first five or three seconds, to see if it's what you want. That way, you save time and ensure accuracy for the entire video. Once the first sampling looks good, you can move on to generate the rest of the frames using the looping logic. That's my usual practice. Mask editing can be used for out painting or in painting. It's all about how you set it up initially for precise character motions. For example, here's the guy dancing. If you want hands and body parts to be more precise, you could add more conditions like DW pose to support the movement. Let's say I use another wand base to video and connect it in the middle. The last latent data passes to our K-sampler and trim latent. However, the control video here won't use the source video because the source video is clear. It's this batch of image frames, not the DW pose. If you want the DW pose, load the video and create another data route. For example, I have another DW pose here. I can use the resize image output and set another input for the DW pose for the second wand base to video. One more thing to mention, and many people overlook this, is the strength numbers. In the previous workflow for long length videos, there are strength numbers to set. For example, here it's 1.0. If you want less influence from the DW pose, maybe set it to 0.7. In this dancer video, the movement is simple, so it doesn't require complex adjustments. If you have crossing arms or legs, those movements will need another DW pose. In this case, using only one wan vase to video condition might not identify details properly because from the AI's point of view, it's just a blank white region. It has to place the character into this region and follow the pose shape. Sometimes it doesn't work well for complex movements like crossed arms. To fix that, I'd suggest adding another wan vase to video for better focus on character movement. Another example is this video. As you can see, there's fast punching and complex movements. Some hands here, if I rely only on masking, won't create precise positions for the two hands in front of the face and cheek. Without a DW pose, the AI sees only a flat white area and tries to fill it in. In this case, I'd add a DW pose because many frames involve crossed arms like the left hook and right jab of the Android character. Without a DW pose, the motions won't be precise. Sometimes, the hands might disappear under the cheek or break apart into pieces. So, I recommend using multiple vase for conditioning to support complex motions better. For instance, in this setting, when the hand pulls up, you might see fingers breaking apart. With a DW pose, it would be sharper and stay consistent rather than morphing frame by frame. Afterward, it comes back as a hand. Adding a DW pose supports such motions and improves small details, like avoiding hands being misplaced behind the hips. Multiple one vase 2 video for conditioning can enhance precision, as I demonstrated in previous tutorials. 
Check those out for more on its examples and character motion control. Overall, mask editing is pretty fun. I'd say it's the most enjoyable part of using the WAN 2.1 vase. Give it a try, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day!